This is section 6.2 having to do with remainder theorem and factor theorem. All that we're doing is trying to look at polynomials and break them down into their zeros. Because once we break them into their zeros, like 2, 6, and then we talked about the leading term. Let's say the leading term was, oh, uh, negative 3x to the sixth. Well, let's make it fifth. All right. So you had two zeros. You had a two and a six. And let's say for my zeros, I had a multiplicity of two here and a multiplicity of three here. And so what that would mean is uh, you look at negative x to the fifth, which means it would start high and end up low, because that's what a odd function would be. And then at 2, it's going to bounce. And at 3, it's going to go, or at 6, it's going to go through and then go down. And there you can sketch your graph. Knowing the zeros, super helpful to be able to sketch any polynomial graph. But what if you don't know the zeros? So you've got to find those zeros. So there's two ways in which we can do it. Uh, one is the long division method, which is probably the most, um, I would say, effect, effective way, because then you get your variables the way you, they appear. But then there's the synthetic, which is a little bit more efficient, because you leave out the variables and you just deal with the coefficients, and you get the answer quite a bit quicker. So I'm going to take a simple polynomial, x cubed plus 0x squared plus 0x plus 27, and I'm going to divide it by x minus 3. Now we need to talk about two things. One is there's this difference between a root and a factor. A factor is if you have something like, in this case, x minus 3. It's a factor because you have the variable and the, as we're going to find, the root. But how do we find the root if we know the factor? Well, if you set this equal to 0, you will be able to find where the, the root is on the graph. And that is, solving for that, you get x equal to 3. We'll come back to that, but this is the factor at this is the root. And you can go back and forth. If you know the root, you just say x equal 3 and then solve for 0. Then you get the factor. If you have the factor, you solve for x and you'll get the root. All right. So in long division, if we took 8 divided by 3, what's happening there is you're trying to see how many 3s go into 8. Well, there's two of them. So then we multiply 3 times 2, and you get 6. Now, we want to see what else there might be. So if you, um, 3 times 2 is 6. If you reduce the 8 by 6, you'll get 2. And notice 2 is less than 3, so we say a remainder of 2. Or you could say this is 2 plus 2 thirds. So it's a mixed fraction, which can be very helpful. So 2 times 3 is 6. 6 thirds plus 2 thirds is 8 thirds. So that's the method that you use. We're going to use that long division method to divide this. x times x squared is x cubed. x times x squared is x cubed minus 3x squared. Because you multiply negative 3 times x squared. Now what we're going to do is reduce x cubed by x cubed and take the opposite of the 3x squared. And so that's going to give me 0 plus 3x squared. All right? x times 3x is 3x squared. So we have 3x squared minus 9x. And this is going to be dropped down here. Now we want to reduce 
3x squared by 3x squared. So you take the opposite of those. And then this is just going to give you 0 plus 9x. And we'll drop this 27 down. And something great is going to happen. x times 9 times 9 is 9x. Nine, 9 times negative 3 is negative 27. All right, and I just realized that I needed to change my example a little bit here. It's just a quick little switch. I'm going to change this negative here, positive, to a negative because then my factor is going to work with this. I'm going to take this one and change this guy to that'll be minus 27. So then this is 9 minus. So therefore, all right. And so if we're looking at factoring out x cubed minus 27, now when we get to this, you can see that when you take the opposite, 9x minus 9x gives you 0. 27 negative plus 27 is 0. So if you get 0, that means that x squared plus 3x plus 9 is the factored form, x minus 3 times x squared plus 3x plus 9 is your factor. Well, that's the uh, long division. We can do this also with synthetic division. And synthetic division is just leaving out all the variables. So you take x cubed minus 27 and make put the coefficients 1x cubed, 0x squared, 0x minus 27. And then what you're going to do is you're going to put the root, and the root here is the value that made the factor equal to 0. Your goal is to find 0. So if you solve for x, you're going to get x equal to 3. 3 is going to go right here. Right, so now, all we do is drop the 1. 1 times 3 is 3. Add these up. 3. Multiply 3 times 3. Oh, this is interesting. And then uh, add these up, you get 9. Multiply these, 27. Add these and get 0. Now, if this is 0, it factors out. And the coefficients here will be x to the 0, x to the 1, x to the 2, which is my x minus 3, which was my factor, knowing the root was here. Notice we have roots with synthetic and factors with long division. And then the coefficients leave us x squared plus 3x plus 9, which is exactly the same as what we had here. You can use either method, whichever that you choose. Okay, so here's another example of, of dealing with a synthetic and long division. Works out great. Uh, I might show you this one real quick. If we took 1x cubed, 4x squared, negative 5x minus 14, and then the root is x minus 2 is the factor, Then to get the root, all you do is set x equal to 2. And there you go. Drop the 1, multiply by 2. Add those together, multiply by 2, it gives you 12. Add those up and get negative positive 7. 7 times 2 is 14, which adds up to 0. So this is x to the 0, x to the 1, x to the 2 you'll get x minus 2, because that's what the factor is, times x squared plus 6x plus 7. And there's the
a synthetic method for finding that. All right, now this is going to seem very boring and not very interesting, but this remainder theorem is, there's a shortcut for seeing if there's a remainder or not, and that is take the root, take the root and put it into the function, f of the root. And what you get out at the end is going to be the remainder. If it's zero, then it's factors. If it's not, then that's the remainder. So the factor theorem is, is that whenever you put a value into the function and you get zero, then that's going to be a root. All right. And then this last one, you have polynomial, this degree, all of these are going to be roots, but sometimes they could be multiplicities of roots. But you know that if there's one, two, three, four, five x's, there could be at most, there could be five roots, but never more than five. All right, so that's remainder, long division, and it's also um, a little bit of synthetic.